Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the scientific method and explain what each of the steps mean. However, before we start, I just want you to realize that the scientific method is not a specific prescribed list of steps that only scientists perform when they do an experiment. In reality, you perform the scientific method every single day to some extent or another, every time you make a decision, you're really going through the steps of the scientific method, just modified a little bit. So what is the scientific method? Well, it's just a way, a set of procedures that people follow in order to gain knowledge about the world around them and to use that knowledge to solve future problems. One thing about the scientific method is that every textbook you open and every scientist you ask is going to give you a slightly different set of rules or set of procedures, which means that no one is actually really right about what order things go in and what order things have to happen in because it changes. It's messy. It depends on the experiment. It depends on the question being asked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you what I think is the most commonly and widely accepted set of procedures for the scientific method, knowing that it's going to be different depending on what experiment you're doing, and it's going to be different depending on what, what sector of science you're involved in, and it's going to be different whether you're in a lab working and doing science or if you're just solving a problem that you encounter in everyday life. So know in the back of your mind that this is not the be-all, end-all list of the exact order of the scientific method. It's much messier than this. So my problem or my purpose or my question is, what am I going to wear today? Now, sometimes the next step requires a little bit of research before you can actually get to that next step. This research can be based on experience, or it can be is something as simple as looking at the weather and determining what the weather is going to be like when I figure out what I want to wear today. So sometimes between the purpose and the hypothesis, you have a little bit of research that takes place. So a hypothesis is a testable if-then statement. For example, in my scenario, if I wear long sleeves today, then I will be warm enough. Creating a good hypothesis will allow you to more easily design an experiment because your variables are already accounted for in your hypothesis. If I wear long sleeves today, that's my independent variable, then I will be warm enough. Temperature will be a measurement and that will be my dependent variable. Now, sometimes when people are talking about science, they may refer to something as a null hypothesis. What this means is you are trying to prove that there is no relationship between the two variables. For example, in my scenario, I could create a null hypothesis by saying there is no correlation between my temperature comfort level and what I decide to wear or the sleeve length of my shirts. So I would design my experiment to try to prove that there's no relationship between the two. But for the purposes of this scenario, we are not going to use a null hypothesis. Now comes the experiment. The experiment portion is where the investigation is carried out. Now, during the experiment, you're going to make observations. Throughout the day, I'm going to think to myself, oh, wow, I'm very comfortable right now, or oh, I'm too hot, or oh, I'm too cold. This is where we make observations, we record our observations, and our observations may be qualitative, so based on our senses, they may be based on interviewing or someone else's perspective, and they may be quantitative or scientific numerical measurements using equipment. Once we've made all of our observations, we can move to the analysis portion of the scientific method. This is where we compare the results of the experiment to the hypothesis. This is where we distill all of our data and start to draw conclusions about the relationships that we have between what we did and what we are trying to find, what we caused and what the effects are. This is the step where you can create graphs and determine those relationships. Finally, the last step of the scientific method is to form a conclusion. This is usually a statement of whether or not the hypothesis was supported or refuted. This is where you can ask yourself, did I reach my goal? What does this mean? Why is it important? What further questions do I have? 
For example, in my scenario, I can wear different clothes tomorrow. I can maybe wear a short sleeve shirt with a hoodie over the top. That way I can adjust when the temperature goes up so I don't get too hot. Now this looks all nice and clean and linear, but in reality, the scientific method is all about feedback loops and bouncing kind of from one portion of the scientific method to another. For example, if I have a flashlight and I notice that it's not working, that's an observation that leads me to a problem or a purpose. So I notice my flashlight isn't working. So I, my question is, is why is my flashlight not working? Then I form a hypothesis. If I change the battery of my flashlight, then it will work. Then I go through my experiment. I take out the battery and I replace it with a new battery and I test it out. I make my observations and I determine it's not working. So I can go back and I can form a new hypothesis. Well, if I change the light bulb on my flashlight, then it will work. I perform my new experiment. I change the light bulb on my flashlight and I make my observations. When I turn my flashlight on, it works. So my analysis for the experiment is that when I changed the battery, the flashlight did not work. But when I changed the light bulb, the flashlight did work. The conclusion of this experiment was that the bulb was probably dead and needed to be replaced. A further question I have is, did I really need to replace the battery? I can redo my experiment testing with different batteries to determine this. So the scientific method is kind of a cycle or a loop of lots of different motions and lots of different feedback cycles. Now this isn't all that goes into the scientific method. In order to turn a hypothesis into an experiment, you need some creativity. You need creativity to design your experiment. In order to successfully take an experiment and observations and turn them into an analysis, you need experience and you need the knowledge of what to do with those numbers and how to find the correlations between those numbers. Also, when you have your analysis done and you're forming your conclusions, you need to have some intuition about your analyses of the data. Is one thing really causing another? Was I just warm because it was a hot day or was it because of what I was wearing. Finally, after a conclusion has been reached, a lot of science needs to be peer reviewed. So other scientists look at the data and determine whether or not it seems valid, whether or not the experiment followed good protocols, whether or not the sample size was large enough to form that conclusion. Oftentimes, this leads to another problem that needs to be tested. So we have the purpose for a whole other experiment. The scientific method might look clean and might look like just a list of steps, but really science is very messy and it does not always happen in very specific orders. And sometimes scientists jump from one thing to another because they have to and things maybe don't make sense and they don't want to perform a whole entire experiment if things aren't making sense.